Hello, my wonderful pen friends. Now, before we dive into today's video, I need to have a little chat with you. So, over the last five years, since I've really gotten into the fountain pen hobby, one of the things I've come to realize and notice about those of us who are, are involved in the hobby is that many of us tend to be a little on the fastidious side, shall we say. Or if, if we're going to be perhaps a bit less kind, the very pedantic side. Uh, there is something about getting into the intricacies of pens in particular that seems to draw in people who are really particular about terminology and using the right terminology and, and all of the little intricate statistics and things that go around with pens. Now, if you've watched my videos for very long, you will understand that by and large, I'm really not that kind of a person. I, uh, both professionally and personally, tend to be more of a big picture kind of guy. I look at how different things connect to each other and trends and that sort of thing. I, I mean, for a living, that's what I do. I, I look at a bunch of different stuff and try to figure out long-term strategy and those sort of things. I don't generally dive into the minutia. Now, I know you're saying, that's funny, you do 25-minute reviews of pens, and it's true. But one of the things I've noticed in doing this is it doesn't matter what I say or how I say it, there's always going to be someone who's willing to dive in and correct me. The reason I bring this up as that's the intro to this video is because the pen in today's review is part of a family of films that makes fountain pen pedantry look like child's play. Uh, the people who are interested in these films are so interested in these films and so involved with them that any potential little mistake is grounds for diving on and attacking. I'm going to let you know right up front, I don't like Star Wars movies. I don't have an emotional connection to them. I never saw them growing up. I didn't see them until I was in college the first time. And then my first introduction to them were the, the redone ones that happened in the mid-90s, mid-late 90s that uh, George Lucas did. The prequels did nothing to change my opinion of the Star Wars movies. And the new ones that are coming out right now have also done very little to change my opinion of the Star Wars movies. I understand they were groundbreaking for the time that they were, that they came out and that there is an emotional connection to them. I just don't have that connection. So if you're one of those people who gets really, really particular about Star Wars stuff or really, really particular about fountain pen stuff, you might just want to skip this review because I am not going to review Star Wars and I'm not reviewing a Star Wars pen. I am reviewing a pen that happens to be Star Wars themed, and I think there's a difference. So I may get some facts wrong. I don't know all the terminology. I don't know all the characters. And if that's going to bother you, it's probably best you just move on. That being said, let us go to the review. The review for today's video is this pen. It is a pen by Cross, and it is a part of their Star Wars line. Now, last year they did a few uh, pens. This year they did a few more, including a Boba Fett pen, a Han Solo pen, and a Chewbacca pen. And obviously, based on the cover of the box, Chewbacca is what I am looking at today. So it comes in this large box, um, and it also comes with this smaller box. Inside the large box, you've got a uh, commemorative booklet and this, you know, felt bed. Underneath, you've got a couple of cross-style converters or cartridges, excuse me. And then in the smaller box, you have this little plastic stand. So it says cross established 1846 USA on one side and on the other side, it has the Star Wars logo. And it's just a block of plastic with a channel cut into the top for you to rest the pen in. So that is what the pen comes with. Here's what the pen looks like. So this is the Cross Townsend Chewbacca pen. So it's a metal pen with a brown lacquer over the top of it, gold-colored accents, it says Cross right here. There is a smoked topaz jewel in the top of the cap there gold ring, and it says 0118 of 1977. There are uh, 1,977 of each one 
of these limited edition versions, uh, 1977 being the year, of course, that the first Star Wars movie came out, the year before I was born. Interesting note, if I had been born exactly one year earlier, my birth date would be 7777. I missed it by a year. Uh, the, the lacquer of the pen has these little grooves carved into it, kind of reminiscent of Chewbacca's hair, I would assume. We've got two little rings here with a little black enamel band in between them. Pen tapers down. You've got another little black ring here, and I'll talk about that in a bit, and then a gold finial to cap it off. On the back of the cap, you've got some the Star Wars logo and some insignia, uh, some, some design work that, and this is where my lack of Star Wars knowledge is going to come in that I assume has to do with either Star Wars in general or Chewbacca or the Rebel Alliance or whatever it is. I don't know. Anyway, um, so it's some design there and then obviously the copyright for Lucasfilms Limited underneath. So that is the pen. It is one of the larger cross pens that I have, I have used. It is by no means a large pen. Um, cross really doesn't make huge pens, but this is, as part of their Townsend model, this is going to be uh, larger than a lot of their other pens. It's a slip top cap comes right off, and underneath you have a black plastic section, or a black uh, lacquered section, because I believe the section is metal underneath, but there's some plastic or lacquer here. It looks like plastic, actually. It looks injection molded there. Um, and then you've got an 18 karat gold cross nib with a nice little feed underneath, and this is a cartridge converter pen. Got the metal tenons here, and the inside of the barrel is metal, so you're not going to want to use this as an eyedropper. Um, and this uses the cross proprietary converters and cartridges. These are not standard international. They are cross, and they've got this kind of weird long collar, which is pretty standard for cross. Uh, the one thing I will call out is the cap does have a nice plastic liner on the inside, and this little band here helps to post the pen so it clicks into place and stays there nice and solidly. Uh, the pen is long enough for me to use unposted, and it's pretty lightweight considering it is a metal pen. It's just a touch on the thinner side, uh, and we'll get to that when we get to the measurements, but it's also pretty comfortable to use posted, so if you like to use your pens posted, uh, I find that this this does work pretty well. The cap is a little on the heavy side, so if you've got smaller hands, it might end up being kind of back heavy. Um, for my grip and the way I hold the pens, it's actually it, the weight of the cap sits right on the web of my hand, so it ends up being nice and comfortable there. So let's go ahead. Let me do a little bit of writing, um, but before we do that, I'm going to do some measurements and comparisons. <music>
a quick apology to Martinus. I actually can't read. Uh, <laughs> I can't read what what the name is that I uh, how how your last name was spelled there. I know that that's an O with a uh, with a little strike through it, but uh, I can't re- I can't tell why I spelled the rest of your name. I'm pretty sure I spelled it wrong. So anyway, okay. So here's the deal with this pen. Um, it's not terrible but it's not without its problems. As you can tell, it's a pretty wide medium, and it's a pretty smooth medium. Um, However, it seems to be, there's a couple issues with it. First of all, it tends to be a little squeaky, and that kind of drives me crazy. Now, that's easy enough to fix. You'll notice right there, I just had some hard starting, um, especially side to side. I don't know if you can tell, but there's certain directions where it's a little bit more feedback heavy or prone. And it does have some hard starting issues occasionally. It's not a huge issue there most of the time. Oh, there was another one. Um, But this nib is, uh, I I haven't delved really deeply into the nib point, but if I had to put money on it just based on the way it feels, this nib is overpolished. There's some baby's bottom going on here. Now that's solvable. Um, And the tip of, the blob of tipping is is enough that it's, you could work through that without too much difficulty and without ruining the pen, I think. But it is a little disappointing. There we go again. Um, It does tend to get a little sensitive, a little more sensitive the longer you write, which kind of points toward a minor ink starvation issue. Um, And uh, yeah, it's, and it's really sensitive to the paper you're on. So if you're on a super smooth paper like uh, like this Rhodia dot pad, it tends to be much worse. It's not quite as bad on something like Tomoe River or, uh, you know, the wheat straw paper I often like to use or some of those other papers with a little bit more texture. It does seem to do better on those papers. But if you like a super smooth paper like Rhodia or Clairefontaine, uh, this nib might start give you some hard start issues that you're going to need to be aware of. Um, in terms of ink flow, it's it's decently wet, actually. It's not too bad. Um, but like I said, it does seem to exhibit some minor ink starvation problems on longer writing sessions. And uh, and it's not like I don't get a lot of bounce with it. I could, you see up here, I did push it just a little tiny bit. I don't generally push 18 karat nibs very far just because they're not meant to be flexed at all. Um, but it is, it is possible to do. Um, it's a little on the feedback heavy side as well, which I mean, it's smooth, but it, especially this direction, it's very sensitive. I, I feel like it needs to be polished better uh, on the, the upper tip of the nib here, especially if, if you tend to roll the pen a little bit like I do. Um, yeah, I wish I could say I loved the writing experience on this pen. Unfortunately, I just don't. It's it's not very good. It really isn't. It's not terrible, and it's fixable. All of these problems are fixable. Um, it's just not. It's not great out of the box. Um, comfort wise, it's actually not too bad. The fact that the the grip is kind of tapered here. You know, it, it middle of the grip is about ten millimeters, so it is a little on the the narrow side. But it, you can go wider, and because there's no step down here. Uh, you can hold it even higher up, and the, the barrel's about 11 millimeters. So you've got between about 9 and 11 based on how you like to hold the pen, and there's really no, you can't really feel any difference here. Um, and so in the hand, it's relatively comfortable, and it's pretty lightweight for a metal pen, as I mentioned earlier. In my mind, though, there are a couple things that that make this pen a little disappointing. One is the the writing experience of the nib, and the other is the price. So this is not an inexpensive pen. Uh, this lists, the, the fountain pen version of this lists for $575, excuse me, retails for $575. That's a lot of money. Um, it's a lot of money for a lacquered metal pen, um, even with a 14 karat gold nib. So I suspect what you are paying for with this pen is the licensing and the Star Wars tie-in. Um, that I could see, I could, I could see being okay with, were it not for the fact that it just doesn't write all that well out of the box. At least this one doesn't. I've tried a couple different inks, 
And I've had very similar experiences with both of the inks. It's a little disappointing. And at that price point, it is actually quite disappointing in my book. So I, I think, to be fair, my hunch is that the audience for this pen is by and large not going to be the serious fountain pen collector. It is going to be the serious Star Wars collector who is going to be interested in collecting all things Star Wars regardless of what they are. Um, In terms of a writing experience, it's okay. In terms of a writing experience, it could be made to be very good. It just is not very good out of the box. It's a nice pen. It's a nice looking pen. I do like brown pens. And, you know, even though it's got gold hardware, and I know some people really don't like gold hardware, it fits with this pen. Um, But as someone who just doesn't have that tie into that emotional tie into the Star Wars universe, this pen just doesn't really do it for me. It's unfortunate. I think Cross had the opportunity to do something really special with the Star Wars licensing. Uh, unfortunately, I, I feel like they missed the mark a little bit here. The nib isn't great. And uh, yeah, it's it's a little disappointing. So a uh, huge thank you to Goldspot Pens for loaning the pen for this review. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, unless you're going to get super pedantic about Star Wars, feel free to leave them down below in the uh, in the comment section here on YouTube or over on penhabit.com. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you here soon for another Fountain Pen Review. Bye.